Hi everyone, I'm Lorraine Driscoll and this is another episode of Building Better Brains where each week we talk about the root causes of why your child might be having a hard time learning, reading and behaving and what you can do to overcome those difficulties with solutions that reach way beyond the limitations of IEPs, medication and endless tutoring. Last week I talked about the link between dyslexia and nutrients and my top four nutrients and why they can be so critical for reading processes in the brain. And I'm going to dive a little deeper into that today and just focus on overall nourishment. So there is no quick fix with supplements. Uh, nourished brains are better able to learn and read. So when I say nourish, that means just a really good, wholesome, whole foods diet, not just focusing on, you know, what supplements, um, key supplements can we take. And while that can be really helpful, um, you know, I've always said, and so have many other practitioners, you cannot out supplement um, a, a bad diet. So the key is to kind of crowd out foods that are anti-nutrients like sugar with foods that are very dense and rich in nutrients. And as you do that, your child will have, you'll break kind of that addictive cycle and they'll have less cravings for those other foods because they're getting, the, their body is getting the nutrients it needs and so forth. So to start with, don't focus on eliminating, 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 focus on nourishing, 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 and adding more in. So um, in the last decade, there's been quite a lot of research into the brain gut connection, which has actually been known for several decades, but recently it's become a real uh, hot topic and thankfully has kind of become more common knowledge as opposed to something that only scientists who kind of study neurology know about. And basically, well, first of all, when I was, you know, studying the human body, whenever I was in high school, we learned about neurons and that's what's we refer to uh, as the brain, the brain cells, right, in our brain. And we've learned that the gut lining has a hundred billion neurons. So there is literally a hundred billion brain cells in your gut. So if you are not taking care of the brain in your gut, you're not taking care of your brain. And that's the case for your child as well. And there's lots of factors that can contribute to a poor brain gut, poor, brain gut health and so forth and so we want to focus on how we can nourish and what the gut needs that can be slightly different than what the brain needs i'm going to get into that in a little bit more detail in a couple minutes for now i want to start off with the first uh kind of just finishing off with a nutrient factor so vitamin d is extremely important for brain health memory learning mood and so forth there's been a huge connection for many many years between low vitamin D, particularly in the winter months with people in the Northern hemisphere and low mood, more depression, more anxiety, low immunity, all that type of stuff. And what they've actually found is that low vitamin D, there's a link with autism, ADHD, as well as dyslexia. So there's certain foods that your child can eat that, um, are, you know, can be helpful like mushrooms, for example, and you can kind of look the list up. There's a whole bunch of good foods that are full of vitamin D. However, traditionally, one of the foods or types of kind of a extract, if you will, that we consumed was cod liver oil, which is very rich in vitamin D, very rich in vitamin A, which is good for immunity and also um, good, full of, you know, omega threes, DHA and all that type of stuff. Those are good fats that I talked about last week. So you definitely want to make sure if you're living in the northern hemisphere that your child is getting plenty of vitamin D. And keep in mind, dosing can vary. So I just found out last year that I have a really kind of a gene that's uh, caused a lot of problems with vitamin D absorption. So I tend to, I was testing low for vitamin D even though I was taking it. And I'm now up to 10,000 IUs a day of vitamin D. And I'm not saying that's how much you should take or your child should take, but it goes to show that, um, you know, all of these factors are really bio-individual and, um, because of genetics, because of just how we evolved, because of our health conditions or health status. So I would suggest supplementing with either a vitamin D3 supplement or cod liver oil capsules, which you can buy at various health food stores. The next mineral is iron. So we talked about zinc last week. Iron is very important because it is essential for reasoning, processing, focus, um, memory, 
And it's often been linked, right? Low B12 um, has been linked because it's, you're not absorbing the iron, has been linked to having memory problems in both seniors as well as young people. And decades ago, there was research done on girls who after puberty had started, you know, they started having their periods, their iron levels had dropped. And this doesn't mean this is always the case, by the way, I wanna be really clear on that. But um, with lower math score scores among girls after they had had their periods, after about a year of having had their periods. And so they knew that less iron would impair um, these girls' ability to, to, to perform as well in math. And then more recently, they found the same type of um, situation with reading and so forth. So it goes to say that if your iron levels are low, you're just not going to have your brain is not gonna be functioning optimally. So you really wanna make sure you're getting optimal iron as well as B12, obviously, because we need that B12 in order to absorb the iron. And I should also mention there is a difference between iron, which we get from plants versus animals. So what we get from plants is called non-heme iron. What we get from animals is heme iron. Non-heme iron is more difficult to absorb for several reasons. Number one, you need high, pretty high enough amounts of vitamin C for the iron to be um, bioavailable in the body. And also because the iron is packaged with other, um, I don't want to say they're not nutrients, but with other minerals and other factors like oxalates and so forth, that so forth, that can also impair the absorption of non-heme iron, which is one of the reasons why vegans and vegetarians are at a greater risk. It doesn't mean they can't have optimal iron, but it's really something I would suggest if you're going to be going down that avenue to be working with a practitioner or somebody, uh, something of the sort. Uh, heme iron, obviously you get from animals and it's much more bioavailable. Um, obviously you need to have that B12 in order to, uh, for, for absorption. So, um, and then the other factor to consider is that sometimes there's genetic factors. Um, some people genetically just do not convert non-heme iron very well at all, just as some people do not convert um, plant-based omega-3s at all or not very well at all. So taking that into account that if everyone's on a vegetarian diet, um, it doesn't mean that, not, that that's optimal for everybody. And sometimes they don't even have to be in a vegetarian diet. Sometimes people are eating a diet with meat and because there's genetic um, mutations or differences, one child is more prone to anemia or just low iron. And with that being said, I should caution you that um, the blood test that's used for iron, the where you measure ferritin, my iron was 21 uh, and they told me my iron was fine. So you have to be really careful with that because they're not looking for low iron, they're looking for anemia whenever they tell you everything's fine. So until your iron is practically non-existent, everything is going to be fine by, in, by the way most doctors are trained to read those tests. So what you want is an optimal ferritin level and an optimal ferritin level is at least 50 for your hair not to be falling out and having all these like, you know, not so great symptoms like lightheadedness and so forth. Uh, optimal, it should be 90. So it really goes to show you, you have to be really careful whenever you're getting these tests done, how they're being interpreted and uh, what we're really looking for. Um, the next nutrient is magnesium. So magnesium is uh, a mineral that most of the population is deficient in, about 90% of the population is deficient in. And there are several reasons for this. For one thing, uh, you know, we evolved by drinking mineralized water from whatever, you know, river was nearby or wells and so forth. And now we're drinking, many of us are drinking tap water that not only has been chlorinated and so many other things have been done to it, but there, it's just totally void of all minerals. Um, so you want to make sure that uh, you're taking magnesium if you suspect you have a magnesium deficiency and you can totally look that up online in terms of all the symptoms. I won't get into that today. The other reason why uh, there might be low magnesium levels is because of soil depletion. Our soil just doesn't have the minerals and nutrients that it used to have and a plant is only as healthy as its soil. And our high stress, so stress really depletes magnesium as well as zinc and so many other things. But um, if you're having high stress, your body's really gonna use up that magnesium because it's known as the relaxation mineral. And it is responsible for over 300 different biochemical functions in the body. So it's like not a nutrient that you can go without and not have side effects. <laughs> so it affects a lot, everything from anxiety to immunity and so much more. With 
uh, reference to in how it can impair or affect dyslexia and reading, it affects nerve transmission, which is absolutely critical for the brain cells to communicate and so forth. It results in decreased neuromuscular control as well as impaired focus, um, you know, and so forth. So this can all be a factor with anxiety and reading disorders and so much more. Now, I advise a magnesium glycinate or citrate for this particular, um, you know, issue, if you will. So magnesium citrate can be really good if your child has issues with constipation uh, because it also helps to move the bowels. In other cases, magnesium glycinate is optimal. Some people, what they do is like magnesium glycinate in the morning and magnesium citrate in the evening. I'm a huge fan of magnesium calm, which is a magnesium citrate um, because it, it can be so helpful and effective for ADHD and just calming down the central nervous system as well, especially before bed. So um, the last part of nourishment that I want to talk about is not a mineral or a vitamin. It is bacteria or several bacteria. So it is probiotics. And the original probiotics, we hear a lot about taking a probiotic capsule, but the original probiotic was fermented foods, right? Like fermented vegetables. Our grandmothers didn't put it in vinegar. Our grandmothers put their vegetables in a brine and it made its own kind of vinegar and um, it, they were regularly eating ferments all winter. So the bacteria in your child's gut manufactures um, neurotransmitters and vitamins, but the neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, dopamine being typically low in ADHD children and what Ritalin is designed to do is to increase dopamine levels. Um, so 95% of the serotonin that your body makes is made in the gut and serotonin is critical for mood and so many other factors. So you really, really can see why you really want to nurture the, those gut bacteria that are responsible for that. The gut bacteria also contains most of your child's genetic coding. So if your child, um, you know, has a really uh, a lot of gut dysbiosis going on, then that's going to affect their gene expression. So all the more reason of why we really want to do some gut healing and so forth and why gut healing can be so impactful on d dyslexia. The bottom line is to ensure your child's gut is being nurtured, supported, um, because the gut bacteria and the gut is means that your child is going to have a healthier brain. So, um, you know, fermented sauerkraut, fermented pickles, all that type of stuff can be so helpful in getting that process started. And I'll have more in the future on gut healing. So the bottom line is to always remember that you cannot out supplement a bad diet. Um, you know, you have to nourish the brain, nourish the gut, and that'll help promote better learning, reading and behavior. So if you found this uh, video helpful or interesting, please share, feel free to hop on my website, take the free quiz, find out what could be the root cause of your child's learning and uh, behavior difficulties. And remember that I do have the Reading Rockstar Bootcamp, which is a six month program that helps your child to better read by first nourishing the brain and then training it through different cognitive exercises that helps to better organize it and um, just improve the overall skills and so forth. And if you'd like, you can give me a call and set up a free 20 minute Better Brains consult and I can help you identify where you should get started to help your child better read and learn. Thanks for listening.